this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog, and welcome everybody to Season 3 of The Muppet Show, and in which to really celebrate this special occasion, what they actually did for the first episode is that they actually brought in not one, but two special guest stars. Now, I know that it did happen a few times before when they brought in two guest stars, but normally when that would happen, you will usually have your one main guest star, and then another would be like a puppeteer guest star. Or in some cases, they, they are pretty rare, but like you would get your puppet special guest stars. Like for at one point in the beginning of the show, they actually did bring in Ernie and Bert. But usually when a second special guest star arrives, it would be uh, a puppeteer normally trying out different... Uh, styles, whether it be shadow puppetry or marionettes in a way. But this time we actually do have two uh, headline special guest stars, and at least back then they were a married couple. This time being Chris Christopherson and Rita Coolidge. Now on one side, you got Chris Christopherson, more known to be a country singer, uh, singing hit songs like Me and Bobby McGee, For the Good Times, Sunday Morning Coming Down, and Help Me Make It Through the Night. And as well, he has actually appeared in a few movies, uh, even starring in movies such as Alice, Don't, uh, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore and A Star Is Born, in which the latter actually, uh, actually he got a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. And on the other side, we actually got Rita Coolidge, who used to be Chris's wife, and she is more known to be a singer for a variety of genres, including pop, country, uh, pop country, adult contemporary, and jazz, in which she actually won two Grammy Awards. Now, what is actually very interesting with this episode, the way that they started, you could definitely tell that there have been a lot of changes. But the one thing that is interesting to, like, that's worth noting about this episode is that this is one that's more about the sketches and more about the variety than mo mostly telling a consecutive story or mostly having the special guest stars involved. Like, you, they're usually on the sidelines to make more room for the Muppets going everywhere. And uh, it's actually very interesting how you can definitely tell there, there are some new elements immediately put into it, and some of them actually did get an upgrade. Uh, some of which, like, the, the one big new thing that they did is that when you go backstage, now you actually go into the cafeteria, and that's when you actually meet the first new character of the season, which is Gladys, the lunch lady. And uh, she definitely is a funny new addition to uh, the Muppets. Uh, like, immediately right when we see her, she's mostly... Like, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is more of your usual lunch lady type of characters where like more like she is more of the independent kind of woman, but um, I guess in a way like she like she she doesn't try to be like an appealing woman in a way. She's just mostly there trying to get through her work, trying to deal with a bunch of weirdos, which is basically what everybody has to do in terms of the Muppet Show. And uh, later on, there's actually like another time we enter into the cafeteria, and then we actually meet another new character, which is Annie Sue. Now, Annie Sue is another uh, pig character, but this one is more like Miss Piggy's competitor. But she's not really the kind that she really wants to compete. I guess the best way to describe it, she's a little bit like Normal from Garfield, where she does, like, she, like, even though there's one side that feels like it, it, like, she's in massive competition, the other one doesn't. With Annie Sue, she's kind of like the new starlet who's entering into the Muppet Show and trying to perform, like, trying to go out and perform a few things. Oddly enough, though, she did do uh, several appearances in the second season of the Muppet Show, but in this one, this is where, like, now she is prominently displayed as a character, now we know who she is, and for Miss Piggy, who is a veteran star of The Muppet Show, she feels like uh, she's a bit of co uh, competition, where people might appreciate Annie Sue more than they would Miss Piggy. So, basically, throughout the entire season, and probably the rest of the series, Miss Piggy uh, is pretty much trying to aim to wipe out the competition, per se. So that's mostly the point of Annie Sue's character. Now, as for the rest of the episode, like I said, 
There really, uh, there, there hasn't been a, a story really prominently displayed. There have been a few times they try to do something with it, but they feel more like running gags than they actually do like, uh, like an actual narrative story that goes throughout the entire episode. Uh, one of which is actually Miss Piggy trying to convince Kermit to marry her since they did bring in Chris Christopherson and Rita Coolidge and back then they were a married couple so Miss Piggy wanted to like kind of get in the idea to Kermit like to go and marry Miss Piggy and stuff like that and then there's actually another one where Gon like Gonzo actually did one of his crazy stunts in which he tries to uh, balance a piano uh, like he was on tight I think he was on a tightrope and he was trying to balance a piano with one arm while he's reciting uh, the mul the multiplication table of seven uh, just roll with it but then afterwards like um, he like a lot of people thought that afterwards he would be dead but like now he's trying to pass along some autographs thinking that now it's valuable since he's already dead which there is some truth into it, I mean, considering so many celebrities are dead now, and, like, a lot of their memorabilia are, like, extremely valuable at this point, so, uh, there is some truth to it, but it does shed a bit of light into it, it, it like, there's nothing grim about, like, what happened, it, it's all light-hearted fun, and it's more about the, like, Gonzo scheme than, like, people believing that Gonzo is dead in a way, and, uh, like, if, if there's anything else that I want to mention is that, like, yeah, since this is more about the variety, about what happened in, like, throughout the episode, uh, a lot of sketches are actually really fantastic. Not only are the new cafeteria bits are great, but uh, plenty of other ones are a lot of fun to watch as well. There are actually some, uh, a lot of good Rolf moments where Rolf would actually be singing uh, a frog we uh, a frog he would a wooing go and uh, he would he would ask Sam like what are a lot of the what are the lyrics of the old song and then surprisingly enough there is another one where Rolf and Fozzie would actually sing high diddly D which is probably one of the very rare moments where uh, the Muppets would actually go and sing a Disney song. Now, it happened a few times before, uh, but anyways, yeah, like, uh, this is one where, like, we actually see, uh, Fozzie and Rolf actually performing a Disney song with High Diddly D from Pinocchio, so that was actually pretty interesting. And, uh, like, other, other great moments as well. What, what's actually really fascinating was that they actually did bring back, uh, like, if you guys remember from the first season, Wayne and Wanda, but this time, it was just Wayne uh, performing a little song, and then like something got screwed up. Uh, something got screwed over. And also, um, another fascinating one is actually the Muppet Labs. In this one, we actually see that the the entire sketch got a massive upgrade. Where, like you you know, like they were in the they were pretty much in the same set in the first two seasons, and only in the second season they introduced Beaker. But now, uh, you could definitely tell that they want to make. Muppet Labs more of a staple sketch and uh, like they definitely gave uh, the the entire set like a massive makeover for Muppet Labs and even the sketch itself it's still absolutely great uh, now the one thing I will mention however is actually the special guest stars and uh, even though there are some nice like downtime moments like uh, you know there, there was actually a nice one where uh, Floyd, Dr. Teeth, and Zoot would actually be performing New York State of Mind. That's like a really nice, like calming uh, musical number, you know, to set to set the tone a bit, like a bit more relaxed, a bit cool after all the zaniness that we received from the Muppets. Uh, but also, like, I guess that's kind of the point of the special guest stars. Like, the only downside to this episode in particular that I could think of, at least, would be that the special guest stars are not very prominently used. Like. Well, they're just more on the sidelines. They're not as important as the Muppets in here. Uh, but I will say, the best one out of all of them was actually the opening number with Miss Piggy and Chris Christopherson uh, singing Help, uh, Help Me Make It Through the Night. And that was actually, what actually really makes it funny is actually uh, Chris Christopherson who plays around with Miss Piggy's hair. And, like, you can definitely tell on his face that, like... He's not used to being in an environment, like, with the Muppets. And, like, the dude was just laughing throughout the whole time. He thought everything about it was absolutely hilarious. And, 
Like, he thought it was always funny whenever Miss Piggy would make a sudden sharp turn and, like, suddenly a bunch of hair would be all around her face. Like, it, like, it, it was kind of fun seeing him, like, just laughing throughout the whole musical number. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but then afterwards, we also got another, like, calming moment, uh, this time with Rita Coolidge singing, uh, We're All Alone. And then finally, there was the end of, uh, the ending bit of, uh, both Rita and Chris singing Song I Like to Sing. And that's pretty much it. So, basically, with this episode, it's barely about the special guest stars, and it's more about the zaniness that the Muppets have to offer. So... Overall, I definitely have to say that as a season starter, it's definitely fascinating to see the new ways that they upgraded a lot of the sketches and the way that they upgraded the show itself. A lot of the additions that they've done in there are great, including the cafeteria. Uh, like, the cafeteria bit is a nice new addition. Uh, some of the new characters like Gladys and Annie Sue are, you know, they're definitely welcome here. Uh, like, sketches that did receive a massive upgrade, like, uh, Muppet Labs, there, you know, that's definitely, uh, that's a, a, a nice welcome as well. Um, overall, like, but it, it, you know, it still actually contains the heart of the Muppets. You know, like, it, it like, it pretty much, uh, keep, maintains, like, what makes the Muppet Show fantastic. And, you know, like, it's, it, like, I wouldn't say... Like, it makes the, uh, like, it doesn't make the entire series better than it already is. It's more like, you know, a nice addition. You know, it's like a new welcome to, uh, the, like, what what's going on with The Muppet Show. Now, even though the special guest stars, I will say, they're not as prominently featured. They're not prominently as, um, you know, as well presented as many of the other special guest stars in the past, but... Still, overall, I would say this is definitely a great episode and uh, a really nice way to start the season. But anyways, uh, that's pretty much it with this episode, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And let us wait and see when, um, if there's going to be more episodes and more new things we are going to be introduced for Season 3. So, so far so good. I can't wait to see what else we got in store with the third season. So... Uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you later, dudes!